He must have. He had to hear me. What's up, man? Uh-oh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, what's up, yeah. man? How's it going? It's going great, man. First off, introduce yourself. To, I call you Vordrak, but that's that's like your Kiwi Farms name, basically. Um, but, I mean, it's your name, but you know what I mean. That's what they used to uh to describe you but you have several matthew hopkins uh and sure. samuel smith yeah who, sure. how would you introduce I'm, yourself i'm sam smith that's my real name i write under the um, pen name matthew hopkins vordrax a mostly a gaming tag i used um years ago that i sometimes have on my older accounts um but you can call me sam if you want may as well very good sam my name is ethan ralph obviously uh host of the sunrise kill stream uh i've known you for a while it's funny because uh <laughs> we used to so i i knew you blogged during gamer Games, so i'd seen some of your articles and stuff because i was a blogger then too uh and then um i guess um i didn't really know uh josh moon that well but he had kind of gotten involved like uh, like a little bit trying to ride on gamergate's coattails uh he changed his forum into like pro gamergate like as a joke or whatever to just get some attention uh and then i guess and i'm speed running through this by the way i guess he um like ended up taking his site down and, and like going away. I wrote an article about it or something. Um, and you were very anti Josh moon even then. And I was kind of taking it as like, what, why is this guy, you know, I don't have anything to do with Josh really. Uh, and then later mm -hmm. on, uh, I was having him on the show and you're like, this guy's fucking <laughs> piece of shit. Like you shouldn't have him on your show, basically trying to, Tell me not to have him on. And, you know, I was kind of indignant about it. I was like, well, you know, nobody tells me who to have on my show. What's going on here? Uh, now, as I look back on it now, uh, I think you're kind of ahead of the curve uh, on this motherfucker, to use a certain term. Um, but, you know, back then I remember being like, oh, man, this guy's kind of, ugh, what's he doing? Why is he fucking with me? Uh, and it's funny because me and other people I know actually – felt that way um and you know you look at it now um and just all the psycho shit this guy's done even since then uh at least for me i, I think back on some of those uh like actually standing up for this fucking piece of shit uh and yeah. you know what i mean like, <laughs> like I gonna, yeah go I ahead say that bro yeah you stood up for him yeah. and he stabbed you in the back and he stalked you and that you, you tried to be good to him and and that's what he's like. He's a snake and a pervert, and we'll we'll go through that. But you know, he stabbed you in the back, and you you went into bat for him. You wrote some good stuff trying to defend him, and he's just not defendable, is he? He's really not. And by the way, it's not just me. You know, I could sit here and talk about it. <laughs> will probably uh, some more. Uh, but it's not just me. He's done that to a lot of people, um, and it's you know. Uh, I don't know if you call it like the asp situation, you know, you know what a viper is, I guess. But, um, uh, yeah, I, I remember, you know, defending him with stream.me and trying to, you know, get them to let him stay on. And, you know, he's constantly having issues, uh, because of his history, which we're going to go into, uh, and then also just his current, you know, status as like, uh, you know, the docs hub and, you know, the open, it's not even, it's not even just the harassment that people post about. He's personally involved with the shit. You know what I mean? Like, it's not, <laughs> you can't say, so they try to compare it to Twitter or Facebook. Well, I don't see Zuckerberg on Facebook giving out orders on who to fuck with. You know, like, that's not something that happens. Or, oh, his address is posted, two posts below Mark Zuckerberg. Or Jack Dorsey's out there. You know, he doesn't own Twitter now or run it now, but you know what I mean? Like, it's just preposterous. Um, but anyway, before I do that, first off, how did you get involved with Josh in the first place? And what's his name now, well, by the way? He changed his name. What is it? Gabriel Potter? What is it? So there was a court record from New York State. Um, he's changed it to James Gabriel Potter, <laughs> which is his mother's um, maiden name. 
Um, but there was a suggestion he was using a fake name in East Europe as well, Thomas something, which I had from British girl he'd been hitting on quite creepily. Well, you know, I um, found his uh, I found his father, uh, and he was actually going by the Potter name, believe it or not, uh, as like um, I guess just an alternate uh name uh and then he also went by the moon name too i don't know it's kind of complicated but uh yeah we actually found him uh on facebook i don't know why um I, josh thought we were kidding about that or something but that was really his dad that we showed on air uh that time but i did i never did hear back from him though i did reach out but i never did hear back so anyway he's mr potter now okay well that's appropriate i don't think he has mr potter style money though but anyway go ahead what? Yeah, I mean, his dad, Jeff B. Moon, um, there was a time when some people even made a forum to mess with his dad because he was so hated. But um, how do I terrible. get involved with Josh? So like you, I was a blogger during Gamergate. You and I were both on the side of Gamergate yeah. for legitimate reasons. Um, and I was doing a piece on a website called Rational Wiki, which is like um, Wikipedia for horrible atheist leftists who, you know, have creepy woke views. And they had a person on Rational Wiki who was a real paedophile defender and had apparently posted links to paedophilia at some point. And I started writing some articles to expose this person. And then I joined... And there was this other guy on there called Dynastia, who I didn't know anything about from some place called the Kiwi Farms. And at first he seemed to be okay. You know, we're going after this pedo on Rational Wiki. And then this Dynastia guy starts being really weird. He, he finds out some other irrelevant user of Rational Wiki is a cook. And that's not my cup of tea, but... No way, he's a cook? He's an adult, so I don't... He found out somebody was yeah. a cook. Okay. Yeah, he found out someone was a cuck and, you know, just like a regular cuck with grown-ups. I'm like, why do we care? There's pedos. And Dynastia from the Kiwi Farms wanted to go after this cuck. Um, and I said, no, I just want to go after the pedophiles. You know, cook is, you know, not illegal. I don't care that much. Um, and then this Dynastia guy asked someone on, P on um, Kiwi Farms to make bread on me. And back then, Kiwi Farms was on line note. And it didn't have all the defences then that it has now. And somehow, someone got so pissed off with Josh that they managed to take out the whole of Lino, which is a pretty big coasting company with multiple data centres. And they were DDoSing it. And then I was getting pissed off with Josh because, like, because I hadn't gone after all the coke they made a threat on me. So I thought, <laughs> well, this is a horrible website. You know, they're stalking women and all sorts of stuff. You know, it's a lot of young girls like real you know females not transgender persons but real females on that they stalk there's one who killed herself called julie terryberry who they got a nudes and she killed herself and they even um in her facebook after she died they filtered it got her family and um they were going to stalk um julie terryberry's family having driven to suicide so i thought these people are assholes they need to be taken down so i just got in touch with lino and i just said you know you're probably being ddos because of josh and it's pretty impressive ddos because they'd like knocked out a three day data center hosting company you know this wasn't in someone's garage and they kicked josh off and then he went over to um a provider called gandhi european french provider and about that time, I got a tip off that Kiwi Farms had some sort of secret child pornography area. And I didn't want to look at it because that would risk me doing something illegal. So what I did was I just forwarded the links without viewing them to Gandhi. And I said, you know, this guy's dodgy. There's child pornography. And, you know, Gandhi are French. So they came back saying, so, yeah, go away, you English person. And I said, no, look, you know, it's a report of child porn. Do you want it to go to police? So they commissioned an independent review. And then I didn't hear anything back. Um, but then Josh posted, Kiwi Farms went down. And then Josh found another host and came back up and posted saying um, Gandhi had kicked him off. And actually he posted the log and Gandhi said, yes, we've had an in independent review. And we found real illegal child pornography on Kiwi Farms that breaches French law. And, you know, Josh posted that. It's a log from... Um, uh, Gandhi.net, and, and it appears it was true. So Josh started moving from host to host, and um, this was back when he didn't self-host. 
and I'm, I'm sorry, this really isn't centering me, is it? Um, but um, I would send the, the, the link to the new hosts, and they would they would just ban him. They all said they found child porn. And then, I mean, Josh actually lost data at one point, a few days of Kiwi Farms, like he did with, after this hack. Now, what but about, now, hold on, you mentioned the, the ch- so they sent you back a response saying they banned them for child porn, basically. But that's not his only tie it's- with child porn. Uh, the the 16 chan, what do you know about, it's 16 chan, right? What is it, uh, the one he ran, uh, or 9 chan? I, I don't know if you know the history there. Uh, as well, yes. yeah. So what? What's the yes. story there? So Josh was. Let, let's take it back a bit. He was on H Chan, and H Chan was set up by a guy called Hot Wheels, who had a bit of yeah. a disability, a little guy. A little bit, and yeah. um, Josh was very involved in H Chan. It had a child porn problem, like most of the websites. The child porn follows Josh around, just coincidentally. Um, it's weird. It's, it's weird, isn't and, it? How child porn follows that guy around? I couldn't. That's strange. Yeah, yeah. It's never anything to do with him. Yeah, um, of course he, not. he insists. But of they not. fell out. They fell out, and then pretty much everyone knows about HN. But they fell out, and Josh, you know, took $10,000 of their money and, and failed to upgrade their um, Chan software. And there was this whole feud when he said it was their fault. And he set up a forum called 16chan.nl. Um, now, it's not to be confused with the um, modern 16chan, because I think someone else runs it now and has a different domain. Right. But Josh set up 16chan.nl, and the rules said child porn is banned except for like stories and cartoons, basically. Um, the child porn Josh likes, because, of course, he's on record as saying he enjoys masturbating to, to Neko Shota, which is Japanese underage boy porn, basically, cartoon boy porn. And the rules of 16chan said, you know, you can have the stories and you have to contain paedophilia and paedophilia specific boards. You can't mix it with other boards. And then there was this storyboard called File, which was just paedophile stories, like text stories. And there was a story there about Big J, which is presumably Josh, you know, going to a third world country, abducting a five-year-old, cutting a hole in the five-year-old, and raping the five-year-old to death through the hole. And this was Big J. And Big J got out his nose. And it was creepy as fuck. And I actually, it's not illegal to view text stories in Britain. So I took it and I spoke to a Harvard police detective um, and said, look, there's this website. I'm not going to look at all of it, but there's these text stories. And I hear he's got image boards. So I've been given these links where they say they've got photographs. And this detective went through it and he decided he wanted to fuck Josh over. But... They mapped out the whole of Kiwi Farms and Josh's other satellite sites because he had some other sites at the time. And they're all outside the jurisdiction. But that was one of the first law enforcement interests. And even now, apparently, some of that information is of use to current police officers in multiple countries. Um, There was something else I was going to say about Josh at the time. Oh, yeah, he had um, a domain at the time called exodus.info. And he was making out he was going to... Um, build a, a, a automated child porn detector that could, you know, be licensed to websites. So if people uploaded child porn, it could be blocked. And he never finished it. And the whole point of Exodus.info was that people had to send him samples so he could, you know, calibrate no! the scanner. So they... <laughs> asking that. Oh, uh, like, he was just doing a little coding, yeah. Vordrak. Come on. Oh, no. Yeah. But he, he, he needed it for, for, for research, he said, you know. No. He wanted to calibrate using those images. No. He just had to perfect the uh, the bot there. Oh, dude, this guy. Man, there's there's many examples. You mentioned, you mentioned the declared love for Shotokan. There's posts. What about the, the post? How old was he when he made the post? I thought he was like 20 or something when he made the post about killing his mother. Uh, I'm not sure I'm if... Funny. Yeah, go ahead. I'm not sure if you're yeah. So he was active on a game forum. It was um, called Blockland. Yes. And Blockland is a bit like uh, an online Lego game. You can build stuff with bricks. And they had a fairly teenage forum. And Josh, you know, tried to interact socially with some of the people there, particularly a young woman called Clara Lovett, whose online name was Stocking. And she was into Vore war porn and he tried to impress her even commissioned some for her <laughs> um you know some cartoon <laughs> porn um 
I think she may have been underage for part of the time. And oh. he eventually he threatened to cut off her arms and legs, oh. aiming to rape her to death. Now, wait a or minute. maybe leave her to die. That doesn't sound very romantic, <laughs> Sam. Well, it's still online. I mean, you don't have to take my word for any of this. Most of it's still online on Blockland, and ED has a link to the thread, in fact. Mm. And, you know, and he admitted it. He said, oh, I was really mad that day when I threatened to, you know, dismember this woman. Um, in fact, interestingly, there, there's a, another woman I've been speaking to, like, oh. only in the last few months, Ugh. who claims she's been speaking to Josh online. And, you know, she claims to have received very similar offers, you know, to go to Serbia for the light mutilation. I mean, I haven't really? verified that with Blockland, you know, the poster online. Really? Whereas this woman um, has shown me. I, I, I met with her. She has shown me um, a picture. She says Josh sent her of his penis, which is horrible. Wow. I mean, now, know, wait a minute. Eyes. I mean, wait a minute. Now, this sounds like something right up. I mean, not that I want to examine. I don't need to examine either. You said it sounded ghastly, but the story itself. Also, he's talked about his dick being broken. I don't know if you heard that audio. I don't have that audio. Readily available, yes. but uh, we played the audio uh, of him talking about um, yes. basically his penis being desensitized and uh, it didn't work. Uh, and he blamed the Jews, I think, for for his circumcision or something like that. Uh, I don't know. I have to. Uh, I have to find the club. <laughs> um, I think it was Joe Winston or PPP. It was one of them because I saw it too. Yeah, and, and I played it on the show. Basically- I used to have the clip. I move computers so many times I don't have it. Uh, yeah, he he said he was circumcised and yeah. he wasn't sensitive enough. Yeah, um, and you know dysfunctional. I mean, most circumcised people it's very common in America apparently. You know, are able to function normally sexually, but Josh seems. But it's because problem. he had. Um, it was, I think he might have talked about this some too. I think it's because he had. Uh, it is you can be a little desensitized from that, uh, and thankfully I'm not circumcised, so I'm, I'm thankful for that. We talked, we've had shows on this before, not to volunteer too much information, but that's that's another known factoid from the Kill Shame catalog. We'll put that episode up uh, soon as well. Um, but uh, I think it was also from his like, um, I guess you'd say depraved activities. Uh, that maybe he had lost uh, some some sensation there uh, from his past. You know what I mean? Like from the Shotokan days um, and perhaps went a little too hard uh, with his with his endeavors, which does – that could happen too, you know? Yeah, I mean, you do get desensitized. If you have a fetish, in Josh's case, um, underage boys, you know, you can get <laughs> desensitized to, to other kind of – normal sexual sim- sim- stimulation. Yeah, you know, that's the thing, it's, too. Um, yeah, that he just, problem. he just becomes so depraved that normal, you know, everyday stuff doesn't really doesn't really do it for him. It has to be little boys for him to, uh, to enjoy. What a sick fuck, yeah. honestly. I mean, he sent this allegedly, right? I listen to that because I'm still verifying it. But this woman, I, I met her. I won't name her because she's um, not ready for that yet. But I met with her <laughs> and she great. showed me what was allegedly Josh's penis that had <laughs> been um, sent her, I think Telegram or something. Um, it, it was circumstance, circumcised. It looked, looked horrible, like little <laughs> short stubby toadstool thing. Um, and, um, you know, a lot of his posts, you know, it's it's hard to sometimes prove whether someone's being forged or whether it's them, but there was a lot of stuff there, you know, where he was kind of alternating between incompetent attempts to charm her and whinging about his current attacks from the transgender persons, from Kefels. Um, apparently he's traumatised by me and by the, the guys who got his mum fired, which is another thing he's responsible for. Um, and um, so he kind of alternates between attempting to charm this woman and these paranoid rants. I mean, much like today, in fact, um, he's trying to put his website up and he's actually been asking for help on tech forums. And right. some of the threads are available. I sent you one and he had this huge argument with some random tech dude because he couldn't get some package to work, like just some random bit of his web server because he didn't know how to do it. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, and basically they told him, you're not welcome here. Leave, <laughs> I think was what was what some of them uh some of them said there um and he was talking about paying some guy in bitcoin sorry if you get put on the list now i don't think the guy even took the yeah the payment anyway but 
he he did, but then he donated oh. it to the transgender no. um, lifeline or something just to annoy oh. Josh. Um, so he took the money and just to annoy Josh. Did he not do the work either? You don't he want just your did... filthy money, Josh. Give it to the transgender people. I mean, Damn. you know, that's fine. It's just astonishing how hated he is. I mean, even the Nazis wanted nothing to do with him. I mean, people say he's right wing. He's not. You know, the conservatives reject him. The alt right reject him. I mean, right wingers like you and I reject him. And the Nazis. I mean, one Nazi said, "Well, Josh is just proof we need bigger ovens." And, you know, <laughs> and, and, and that guy Cody Wilson. You know, around Ghost Gunner and Hatred. Yeah, I know I about Cody with, Wilson. Um, I like Cody Wilson. I had a chat with Cody Wilson, and the only person ever banned from Hatred was Josh. And it was after Cody read one of Josh's pedophile stories and just went, nope, you're a degenerate. Bye. Wow. <laughs> it was just that. And the irony was, Cody later had some sort of issue with a, a 16-year-old girl that he allegedly Yeah, I think he got set accident. up on that, honestly. But it was kind of shady. But you know what I mean? Like, the whole deal, yeah. he, like, it was some sugar daddy website or some shit. Like, I don't know. It was kind of shady. But, yeah. yeah, I remember that. It happened, like, a couple weeks Actually, when he came on my show, I think he was under investigation at that time. Now, we didn't know, and the story ended up breaking a couple weeks yeah. later. But, man, that was such a fun show. That'll be up on the Rockfin archive, by the way. Um, but, uh, yeah. You might watch that. Yeah, it's good. I think he's a good guy. I think I think there was something shady about it. I don't think he knew she was 16, and that's yeah. why he got such a lenient plea bargain. Right, that's what and, I And, mean. you know, fundamentally... He's just a guy who's turned on bad out women. It's nothing like Josh's, you know, murdering five year old shit. And he was as horrified as anyone else. And he just banned Josh. By the way, what about Josh? I don't know if you saw the post where he's fantasizing about killing his mother. We talked about this. Yes. Um, that was kind of bizarre, too. I don't know, um, you know, how he just wiped With a steak the- knife. It's on my blog. There's a screenshot, um, an archive link on one of my blogs. It was about the time. The reason I dug it out, I remember, was because there was some sort of threat um, to murder a bunch of school children in Pensacola or somewhere, or Escambia or somewhere, where Josh lived. And it was traced to his email service. Um, and he opened this stalking email service called lolcow.email. And then his announcement thread was all how they were stalking feminists and sending them pedo, um, penis photos and impersonating other feminists and shit. And then someone used it to threatened to do something, I, I can't remember the details, um, but it was it made TV news to threaten like local schools, and then the police kicked his door in. And he was like, no, it wasn't me, um, which I think is bullshit. I mean, the sheriff who let him off did so because Randy Harper told, her, told him to, and was later disgraced because this sheriff spent tens of thousands of dollars in public money. Big Randy Harper, there's a the name I haven't heard in a while. Big Randy. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> Yeah, she actually defended Josh. She actually leaned on his local sheriff not to do him. Hamburger for, um, Harper. You know, I think it was the murder here. threats. Yeah. Um, and I actually, um, when the current stuff broke about Keffels, I actually reached out to her current employer, which is something called Pondurance, and said, did you know that this horrible, you know, stalking terrorist site was kept alive partly because Randy Harper defended the owner um, during a police investigation. And, you know, I haven't heard back. Randy posted saying she was very tired that day. I don't know if she's still at that yeah. employer. I might follow she up. She probably was but, low um, on blood sugar know, that day. Vordrak. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure she was. Talk about scammer. She makes me sick. You just reminded me. Uh, yeah. I, I, go go Google. Go to the RalphRetort.com and search Randy Harper. There will be plenty. There'll be plenty for you to catch up on if you'd like to uh, delve into that yeah, topic. Did, did some good stuff on her. I remember. I remember um, some of that was good background material. Yeah, it's um, good stuff. Also, that so there was such great stuff. Oh, such a piece of trash. Uh, so. So we talked about that. Oh, also his mother in general. Uh, I know he he's talked about having this family uh, emergency. I don't know if that's true or not, or if he just said that so he could build in a week of off time into whatever he was doing. Uh, and you mentioned his mother getting fired. I know she's had some DUI problems uh, as well. Uh, w- yeah. What do you know about his family connections? I have to be a bit careful about his family because some of them aren't 
involved and it's not fair to draw them into it but i'll talk about his mum because she was actually supporting him when he was um she was a kiwi, kiwi farms, farms user was she not um, there was or was that account. a fake? I don't know um, if we can prove that or not, but there was an account with her name on it. Yeah. Uh, well, there's an account with her name, and a bunch Close of enough. people complained to her employers, which are Keller Williams, that she was a user of this site. And they had all sorts of problems, apparently. I mean, um, obviously, we only have what Josh had said on various chat boards, but apparently people were spamming all the other Keller Williams people with child porn and you know, bomb threats or whatever. And um, I mean, it's Josh perhaps exaggerating, but she lost her job and apparently her real estate license over that. Um, and I think on balance of probabilities, what oh, they thought was... Thanks, well, Spectre sent $3. I love this Vordrak guy. Seems like a real good chap like the Britons of yesteryear. He should be a frequent guest. Frequent guest, he says there. Well, I'll see why we couldn't have you back. Uh, go ahead with your thought there. By the way, appreciate that, Jay Danks, Respector. We have the TTS on, so they might pop in and ask a question or... Or say positive things. Like yeah, that. I think the other thing was that um, Josh's mum. I think one of the ways he got her fired was he went on, um, you know, Dax's show, Dax Herrera. What's he called, Dick Masterson? Um, and there was this incident where a transgender person who was upset with Josh actually went to the door of their Pensacola home whilst he was living with his mother. And so you imagine his poor mother has to open the door, and some transgender. You know, huh. I think it, they m might be an ex-military, but this quite early <laughs> transgender person attends at the door with a legitimate grievance about Josh, but, you know, not necessarily very friendly and carrying a combat knife, I think they said. And, uh -huh. you know, his mum's answering the door and Josh is carrying in the basement or the toilet or whatever. And, what a you know, because he's so brave in real life. And, you know... Josh then gives this interview to Dax and says his mum said some horrendous, hor you know, thing about the transgender, you know, the ugliest bull dyke that the, the mother had ever seen, I think. And because of that slur, um, Josh's mother, that, that was taken to her employers. And I oh. think that may well have contributed to her losing the job. So <laughs> Josh's interview, Damn quoting me. his mother in, in hate speech, helped her to lose a job with the real estate agent that she worked for him. And, and wow. you know, that was, again, another contribution of Josh to his mother's life. And he did fantasize on Blockland about murdering her with a steak knife. And there's another post I've seen somewhere where he said he begged his mother and his, this was back when he was at school, he begged his mother and his therapist to sleep with them because he was so sexually frustrated. I like he was, wait, he was wait, a proper wait. incel. You know what wait, I mean? Wait, wait, was, wait, wait, know... wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Hold Sorry. On. Let's pull that back one second. You said there's a po I haven't even seen this. Now, some of this I'm familiar with, but you said there's a post where he talked about begging his mother and his therapist, but let's focus on the mother part. He begged his mother to sleep with him? Yeah, I mean, I've definitely seen the steak knife one, but I can't remember where I saw the one about him begging his mother for sex. Yeah, because I want um, we need that bit of information if that's the case because, uh, you know, who else did that it was Chris Chan, obviously, and I think just the... Uh, the tie there would be unbelievable uh, if he if he did say that, which I don't have any trouble believing. Yeah. But I want to. <laughs> I want to. I saw your show. It seems like ILJ, that. By the way, say what that was a kill stream. Oh, Janky? I saw your kill stream about ILJ. Um, you know that woman they framed. For, yeah, that was bullshit. Um, the the. Yeah. Yeah. Because you you got the arrest of um, Chris Chan first, didn't you? Yes. You were there, and and you and Pansu. Yes. Um, filmed it That's and right. then i watched your kill stream and about how josh was trying to frame that that woman isle j yeah. for talking christian into sleeping with his own mother right and, and it was to throw heat off him that was all i mean not that you know she was completely perfect or whatever but that was all an op by kiwi farms like they, they were talking like the the cia was after him and shit like he was just making all this shit up uh, it was the craziest thing I've seen in a while. Uh, and that's really when I, you know, I knew they were crazy already. Um, but like his users were just marching in lockstep with that and making, you know, he had the content creators on YouTube, just making all this fake fucking news about it. Um, I don't know. It was just bizarre. Uh, you would think, you would think she was like Charles Manson and fucking Ted Bundy rolled into one with the way they were trying to portray her. 
Yeah, I mean, a lot of it was probably not true. And even if it was true, she's just a young girl who's been, been kind of led into this stupid well, opportunity. Well, I mean, to she well, was... Chris Shannon, you know... Yeah, she was... First, first off, she was, a, she was part of the whole industry he fucking pioneered fucking with Chris Chan, yeah. for one. So, like, you know, all this... Oh, they do dirty shit on Kiwi Farms all the time. So this idea that... There's some better class than others, you know, on their site. No, they're all scum. That's that's just the first yeah. thing. So first off, she, you know, she was engaging in the, you know, Chris Chan community of people that fucked with him, right? That was Josh's whole fucking community. First off, uh, yeah. so that's just point blank right there. Um, and so I don't know. I just felt like um, they were trying to throw all this. Onto her when actually their whole, you know, 20 year, uh, you know, cataloging of this fucking retard who doesn't even, you know, he's obviously mentally ill. He's a mentally ill guy. He should be locked up somewhere. Clearly. Uh, and this whole, oh, it's fun. And, oh, let's just do videos about it. And let's, uh, you know, let's do this and that. I went to record that as a mock of the whole thing. I was making fun of the whole thing when we went to record Chris Chan. You know what I mean? Like, it was a satire on their whole fucking industry, right? Like, it's fucking bullshit, right? It's some fucking... It's just some fucking mentally ill dude. We just rolled up. You can record mentally ill people getting arrested all the time in the United States. And where's he at? He's in jail when he should be in some fucking nut house somewhere. But instead, there's nowhere else to send him. They just put him in jail. Like I always do. Um, but the whole thing is is just sick and twisted, man. Anyway, go ahead. Sorry, I know I'm getting off on a on a rant here. No, I totally agree with you. I mean, they've been stalking. I think some of what Josh did was like financial exploitation as well. I don't want to sound, you know, too much like a social worker, but Josh had access to Chris's email account. Right. And he made these silver coins and had some promise that Chris would get some paltry sum of money or some coins or something. Right. And Chris never saw any of that money. So That's right. this this is straightforward profiting off a vulnerable adult. I mean, you go to jail for that in here. I'm pretty sure you go to jail for that in the States if the law would get off their ass and just arrest this He guy. should be in but, jail. You know, what do you think about that? Should he be in prison? Because that's what I think. Josh. Yeah, he should be in prison. So. Um, If he lived here, he'd already be in prison. I mean... He might be in prison if he stayed in the United States. The only reason he's free is because he's moved to some unknown location and a lot of law enforcement aren't really set up for internet crime, particularly anything out of the box. So there's a lot of, um, you know, passing the buck goes on. You know, your local sheriff will say it's federal. Um, the feds will say, well, he's not in the country and it's, you know, only a free speech site like 4chan. Although they're kind of getting beat up about that now. Um, the Brits would love to arrest him, but he's not in Europe. Um, and I think there's been a, a change, though, because particularly when he set up 9chan, Josh started targeting politicians. And there was a, a forum called Left Nudes on 9chan where Josh was targeting, like, AOC and, you know, a couple of other people. And it was just basically um, a chan board for fake news. Oh, you cut out. Hold on one sec. Wait one sec. It's good. No. You, hold on one sec. Hold on one, hold, yeah, no, just hold on one. Yeah, it was it was mine. I think it just skipped for a second. Uh, so we'll just yeah. we'll just do a holding pattern real quick. Uh, should be back. Um, it's the same issue I had. I don't know why. Um, but at least with the Ethernet. Romantic. Yeah, at least with the Ethernet, it um, it rebounds pretty quickly. It's the same issue I was having last week, chat, but um, at least it rebounds. Yeah. It rebounds pretty quick with the with the Ethernet. Um, go ahead, sir. Uh, repeat. Go back about twenty seconds uh, and and continue. So yeah, I was saying the feds and the FBI and the British authorities, I think, have been taking it more and more seriously. I mean, a big thing was the Nine Chan Left News Board, where Josh was holding fake news of of basically Democrat and Labour politicians, um, and a few other people. Um, and then was Colfax, of course, which was for you know stalking women. <laughs> Wait, was that his? Did he do the Colfax? 
he he hosted one of them. Oh, he hosted. Uh, I was going to say he's um, not fun. He was didn't a non chance club board. Yeah. Um, and that was probably one of the longest iterations of it. It's like Poll or something, you know. It has different websites it's hosted on, but Nine Chan hosts it longest. Um, and then, of course, you've got these bomb threats to MTG. And I think, you know, Marjorie Taylor Green and the FBI think, well, maybe it's a false flag, and maybe some gender person's trying to get Josh in trouble. But we have this all the time because of Kiwi Farms. You know, it's a stalking site, and. There's bomb threats and, you know, some of them probably from Kiwis, some maybe from their enemies, but it's Kiwi Farms, which is the centre of all this. And it's Josh who's at the centre of all this. And there's definitely a change, you know, particularly also threatening to blow up half of Dublin, I mean, or Belfast, you know. There's been a huge history of bombs and bomb threats in Ireland and all this stuff threatening to blow up every Putin place because Keffels might be there. You know, the Irish police do not take that shit like as a joke and they're used to tracking international terrorists because they had it for decades so i mean there's a lot of people gunning for josh now in law enforcement and it's you know it's not seen as 4chan or as a joke anymore you know people are getting pissed off you know the police are getting angry mps and congress women and whatever writing to them saying why aren't you nicking this guy why is he not in jail um and and you know and I have no doubt that one reason Cloudflare got rid of him, because they had Irish police whinging at them and feds and all sorts. And and it is getting hotter for Josh now, hotter than I think he realizes. Yeah, I think uh, it, I think it is getting a bit hotter uh, than he thought it was going to get. It seemed like he was really comfortable in the fact that uh, he thought Cloudflare wasn't going to drop him. Um that that seemed to be an assumption that he had made a bad assumption, obviously it turns out. Um, but uh, w- what are your thoughts there? It seems to have caught him strategically. It's caught him off guard uh, because for all his, uh, you know, shit talking back, you know, to the to the public, uh, that seemed to really catch him on the bad foot. Yeah, there's two theories. I'll tell you both. The first one is the obvious one. It's totally vile. As soon as people start looking at it, you know, in any detail, they start thinking we've got a risk here and people are starting to go to cloud for investors. And that's the obvious one. Now, the second one, which is a bit of a conspiracy theory, but there was some evidence. There is a user on Kiwi Farms who a lot of people think is a C-suite Cloudflare executive. And I've heard this, and it's kind of like one of those things that's hard to verify, but there were definitely post-QE farms where Cloudflare stuff was announced before it was announced on the Cloudflare blog. And there was one user who had a very good profile match and written match for a particular executive. And I emailed Cloudflare to ask them, and I texted. Really? Now, wait, hold on, wait. Anonymous wait, put a pin in that one second. What do you think of all these people trying to defend Josh and Kiwi Farms? Well, you know what? I'll get to that real uh, real quick after this. But finish that thought there, the C-suite executive theory. So I asked Cloudflare, and I know a number of people texted this executive because we got his cell phone. And I won't say who it is, but I just... I use this email tracking service that tells me when the emails are. It's definitely read. And then I got a response back just denying it. But it was from a crisis management PR firm. It wasn't like their regular press office. It was um, uh, a PR firm called Strange Bro, who, you know, deal with serious PR issues. And I just emailed back saying, well, I don't believe you, but I don't care. I'm not going to dig into this if you get rid of them. And then a couple of days later, a few days later, you know, Cloudflare drops kiwi and you know it's hard to prove but there were a lot of people who suspected it was this executive i mean it doesn't matter now it'll be hard to prove and cloudflare's not going to take them well you know that's why they took them that's why they took the stormer down in the first place because um one of their employees was actually friends with weave and friends with so-and-so and and had made some posts with n-word this n-word that i didn't even know this till a month or so ago uh and this was a trans employee with cloudflare and then that started coming out, and I guess you know uh, certain people were making jokes about Cloudflare supporting them, et cetera. And then all of a sudden they just got rid of them, and it was kind of a shock. Uh, and it was really to protect Cloudflare because they didn't want that scandal to yes. hit them, right? And I didn't even know that until a few, like I don't know, maybe a month ago, a few weeks ago. Uh, and it's all as clear as day. All the tweets are archived now. This trans 
person killed themselves or something or they're dead now. I don't know how they died. I think it was like suicide though. Um, so you can't ask them, but all those posts are saved. Uh, so that would make perfect sense actually. Uh, if there was something like that, or if somebody came to Matthew Prince and was like, Hey, look, you know, this might be coming out or this could be a thing. And then he just said, fuck it. Uh, and cut the cord there. Yeah, that wouldn't actually shock me. Uh, but Josh seemed very confident that that wouldn't happen. And in fact, he had defended Cloudflare uh, when they took down the Stormer uh, and so said he there understood was something why. Else. Yeah. There was something else, Ralph. I actually, I hardly ever try to talk to Josh because he always just get lunacy back. But sure. And he lies. He lies like anything. I mean, but I emailed him, taunting him basically, and saying, <laughs> Do you have any comment on this specific user being this specific Cloudflare person. Now, normally what Josh does, we know what he does, complains, anything, he posts a thread and mocks it. Yeah. This email, he did not post. He sent me a one line saying, I'm not going to bother to read this. And he never posted it to his site to mock it. And then I'm told that some of the incriminating posts that kind of make it clear this user is this Cloudflare guy disappeared from Kiwi Farms like they were trying to cover this up. Um, and someone like not knowing that I'd have this discussion with Josh messaged me. So, you know, I am really suspicious there may have been some truth to this. I mean, again, it's hard to prove, um, but we have the archives and, and you know, there may well be something there. Uh, I think your the, the viewer had a question of what we thought about people yes. defending Kiwi Farms. Yes, I, I was going to repeat that. Uh, what do you think of all these people trying to defend Josh and Kiwi Farms? That was a question there from Anonymous. So... Some of them are legit. I mean, we all hate deplatforming of legitimate conservatives. We've all had it. I mean, um, I have problems with Twitter. Um, uh, you might have had problems with YouTube. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, yes, I and, did. Yes, I did. And there's a lot of legitimate conservative, you know, right wing legal content it's in the mainstream that gets banned because there's some quite far leftists at some Cali tech firms. Um, and so a lot of people are naturally sympathetic. And it's only when you look into Kiwi Farms and you realize this isn't a legitimate, you know, conservative site. This isn't free speech. This is a stalking forum. This is a pedophile forum. This is a terrorist forum. I mean, no one's going to ban criticizing transgender ideology. I was at a conservative Christmas party last year and Liz Truss was there. And she's, you know, got very strong views on transgenders. No one's going to stop us, you know, opposing transgenders. Ted Cross has been posting this week, um, calling out a doctor who was doing transgender surgeries on underage children. You know, this isn't about the right to criticize transgender people or even investigate whatever Keffels has allegedly done. This is about bomb threats. This is about stalking whole families. Um, this is about stalking children. This is about paedophilia. This is, you know, and I totally understand. I mean, there were some decent people on Kotaku in action, you know, saying, you know, this is censorship. Oh, and that. it's because a lot of these people, they don't use Kiwi Farms, so they, you know, naturally think it's just some shit posting site like Aitken or, or um, 4chan. It's not. It's very different. And, you know, I just think most of them are misguided. A few of them are malicious Kiwis, but what can we do? Well, that's pretty charitable. Honestly, that's more charitable than I might have <laughs> that I might have been. But you think some people are genuinely getting getting kind of swept up in this? Yeah. I mean, because, I mean, it is a big thing right now that there are, I mean, PayPal, you probably haven't heard, but uh, most of the British newspapers have been running a story this week because PayPal banned some really middle-of-the-road um, organizations, the Free Speech Union they banned. Um, they banned some quite moderate, you know, trans-skeptical feminist organizations from PayPal. To the extent, you know, there are questions being asked in Parliament, shall we pass laws to stop PayPal banning legitimate conservatives? I mean, that will happen in due course, um, you know, I think in Britain and the United States. I mean, and certainly... No one in our government likes them. I mean, a few weeks ago, um, I was with the other candidate for prime minister, Rishi Sunak, at Brockett Hall. And, you know, we have a conservative government, and they're very clear. They do not like big tech, and they want big tech to stop censoring. And there is going to be more of that in a law we're seeing now. And without knowing what Kiwi Farms is, you can see how they might naturally think it's just some conservative website. It's only when you get into the details and, you know, you realise they're stalkers. I mean, it helps they stalked the wife of one British MP, I know. But, you know, you can see why a lot of legitimate people are suspicious about deplatforming. And Josh is benefiting from that because, you know, 
what it is, it, I mean, Q Farms is basically paedophiles unite for stalking. That's that that could be their slogan, you know. But without knowing what it is, it's some weird site with a, a green bird on it. You know, it, it's not like all its wrongdoing is obvious till you really delve into it. Now let's see here. Uh, looking through the chat, also the Rockfin stream working pretty well today. Uh, so their chat system is a little, uh, I like how that, I don't know if I like or hate, should I say how it has, it has threaded chat, which, uh, I kind of like, honestly, uh, but you can see how that might be an issue if we, like, uh, -oh. I'm hearing some feedback now all of a sudden. Did you switch your audio there? Okay. Now it's back. It's fine. I'm just typing. Um, yeah, we've got some. Uh, I was just trying to find a link, and I, I just want to find a decent one to post into the chat. Um, new prime minister here, Liz Truss. There was this online safety bill they were passing, and it's going to have. I think my sound isn't matching oh, yes. my um, cam image, but it's going to have protection against big tech in it. They're going to be regulated to stop them banning people from middle of the road views and to make them give reasons and stuff. Um, and some of the left were complaining, but there's going to be more free speech protections now. So I just put a, a link to that article there. Um, just cause people also I see somebody said, ask me, tech. somebody said, ask about cog. So this guy, I don't know if you saw, I got assaulted in Portugal twice this year. Now the second time, uh, a couple streamers, uh, came there and like jumped me in the streets. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. So they jumped me in the streets yeah. and Cog was on video saying that he was coming there to attack me the night before he was in the UK and broadcast this and I need to find an attorney in the UK. Yeah, where's the clip? Who's got the clip of Cog admitting it? I'll try to see if I can find it actually. Uh, but I'll have to scroll back all the way to the end of May. I can find it. It'll just take a second. Um, but, you know, legal there over in the UK. What's, like, is there any type of recourse or something like that? I'll see if I can find the video. I'll have to keep scrolling back. Now, I did file charges in Lisbon. So there's outstanding charges as well. Uh, but, you know, obviously they flew back to the UK. So um, they're not going to. You know, they're probably not going to do anything unless cool. they go back to Lisbon. But I did file official charges and went out of my way to do that just in case I wanted to pursue, like, a civil case. Uh, I wanted to have those charges filed. So there are charges against them in Lisbon. Um, but what's the recourse in the U.K.? Also, I'm still scrolling back. I'm back at August, so I'll find it because uh, there's a video. Did he, broke, did he, like, send any of these messages from the U.K.? Yes. Yeah, he broadcasts so, this live from the UK. Yeah. So just just so you know, I've got a master's degree in, in law, um, in right. legal practice specifically. And so I've passed, if you like, the solicitor's exams. That's what we call attorneys. I've not then gone on and been admitted as an attorney. I own an IT company. That's how I earn my living. But I help people in court sometimes as a McKenzie friend. And I've just actually just won a libel case defending really? one of my articles. It was in the high court, and I won. And it's actually on the case law websites. But um, in terms of your recourse, so I've done media litigation. I'll post the link to the judgment, actually. Yeah. So I'll be typing while we're chatting just to find it. But um, if he's incited violence and it's led to violence, you might well have a claim against him in damages. Um, and we have lots of laws here. We have really tough defamation laws. We have data protection laws. I think there may be conspiracy to cause harm laws. So if it's as you say, you may well have a, a, a claim in damages against him. Um, police, obviously, there are tougher laws here. Um, so if any of it was sent from the UK, you could get someone to file a complaint with his local police. Um, yeah, it was. A, By the way, let me let me uh, let me play this, and I don't mean to cut you off because I just found the clip. Somebody in chat linked it. Oh yeah, it. So Let's I just see. want to play this now. Uh, after this clip, he actually did fly to Lisbon and physically assaulted me with his. Friend. It was mainly his friend who did it, by the way, who I didn't even know was with him. So I got jumped in the middle of the street in Lisbon, Portugal, which I love Lisbon, by the way, and I will be going back. Uh, but let me play this. This is what he said from the UK. I want to say Ma uh, Manchester, uh, but I'm not sure. I'd have to double check on that. Somebody could easily find out. Um, but I think Manchester. 
Let me play this, uh, and you should be able to see. You can see that, right? Uh, let's see. Yes. Okay. All right. Let's play it. Oh wait, hold on. I have to unmute it. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna I mute so I can turn on my speaker. Okay. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work. Go ahead, and mute. All right, let's play. I honestly want to get to fucking Portugal tomorrow, and if we can raise the money to get there, it'll fucking happen. This money is only going to get me there for one fucking day to gun hunt it, find the fucking corner. I've got a friend who will happily kick the shit out of him. I'm, I'm happy to say this on stream as well. Ralph, you'll probably get the shit kicked out of you again in Portugal if I have anything to do with it, and if people get me to Portugal, it will fucking happen. That's just, just how it is. I know for a fact, 100%, 100%. Get to Portugal. 100%, I know for a fact. And he's saying that I'll get assaulted in Portugal. And that's just what happened. He raised money there in the UK. He came out to Portugal the next day, and I did get assaulted by his friend in Portugal, just like he said was going to happen. So, yeah, that's exactly what happened. It's premeditated, I mean, in my view. Uh, But, again, I don't know the law. You know, I've thought about this before, uh, but I haven't had the chance to go over it with somebody who knows UK law. Now, to me, that seems, uh, you know, like he might be legally liable for something there. Might be. I'll have might to be. look that up. Yeah, yeah, yeah it might be. I don't, right, again, exactly. And there's more, you know, there's more evidence, uh, you know, that we have, et cetera. But, yeah, might be. Again, I don't know either. Uh, but it's definitely one of those borderline things i'd say because then he actually did travel outside the country uh and did assault me with his friend the very next day just like he said there um so i did want to run it past uh chat reminded me oh is that the libel case the one you won uh linked in there the the bailey case yeah yeah it's quite funny actually can you hear me sorry yeah i can hear you go ahead yeah oh good um so if you look at the bailey link um Smith v. Baker is pretty grim. It's before the um, Honourable Mr. Justice Griffiths. And I was being sued by this, um, counter-sued by this woman called Esther Baker. And she's a, a very, very troubled woman. And I'd run some stories on her about her making false rape allegations. And then she talked shit about me, so I sued her and she lost and she agreed to a restraining order. But she tried to counter-sue me. And this is basically judgment is her getting her shit wrecked. I mean, there's loads and loads of stuff, but it basically comes down to it. She was trying to sue me for saying she was mentally ill. And during the case, during the hearing, she actually, um, started making submissions to the judge about the little voices in her head. So (laughs) then you get, um, like like grim, dark comedy gold. If you look at, 82 of this judgment. I mean, you don't want to read the whole thing. You know, the judge is saying, you know, she doesn't actually appear to deny being mentally ill. And then the judge is saying that she made submissions to him about her little voices. And then he just says, um, towards the end, 96, um, uh, 96 five will enter judgment for Mr. Smith against Miss Baker. And then some stuff about the cost she has to pay me and she's got to pay my costs. So I've got like, uh, you know, like Bayless High Court enforcement officers go around her house and she's paying me it back month by month. I mean, she's basically unemployed, but I win. And I defended all my articles. And she was cock a hoop about it because there's a preliminary stage in British libel law where um, the judge decides the meaning and if it's defamatory. And then if it's defamatory, then we go on to, is it true or is there some other defence like public interest? So there was a preliminary hearing in February and the judge found like 11 of my articles had really bad meanings, yeah? And she was cock a hoop and she thought she was going to win and then you know um we have this july here in the august judgment he said but you've got no response to mr smith's defense of truth so he's defended all those horrible meetings they're all defended so i put a lot of shield on all the blog posts where um i defended it and all those meanings are now true and it's something really quite funny like um she's not just a racist <laughs> stalker she's worse than most regular racist stalkers and all sorts of stuff and you know but anyway my point is i do know some media law and i'll have a look but i make no promises and i'm yeah. a humble mckenzie friend i'm not an admitted solicitor so you know yeah and i'll send you um, i'll send you some of the stuff because it's something i was gonna you know have investigated uh and there's video yeah. i mean of them doing the assault and everything also they injured uh, a Portuguese woman got her head busted uh, during the middle of this fight as well, uh, which was crazy. It was cra- It was a crazy scene, honestly. Um, if you got a video of him assaulting you, yes. I think the only question is which, which country to sue him in. Um, well, I good. mean, in principle, 
you know, there there should be some damages there. And of course, if it's Britain, um, I think you can get hurt feelings damages. But I'd have to look at it. Wow. I'd have to watch the video by myself, quiet, get a transcript. Do the well, research, then he went out and raised money on the on the assault and like put it on his show and got super chats on it after. So that's like even more punitive. Uh, but yeah, I mean, in theory, I guess you could sue in Portugal and they're but I don't know, like internationally, that would be like a nightmare to get them to. His money's in Britain, presumably. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that wouldn't be. Yeah, I don't think that would be. And I did follow the the criminal there, um, but like I said, if they don't ever go back, probably nothing will. Probably nothing will happen on that. Yeah. Um, but uh, there should be some. I, I'll look at that just because yeah. I don't think left wingers should be assaulting anyone because they're stupid politics. Me either. I just don't want to overpromise. Yeah, um, I don't know. Again, yeah. that's another thing. I know a lot of people in chat want to see him go down for this too, so they bring it up uh, as well. Uh, and again, I don't know for sure. It's just one of those things where uh, it seems like there might be might be some redress there. And they streamed it, yeah, and they bragged about it. Like it's it's pretty. Um, you know, normally, maybe if they hadn't done it the way they did, uh, I would say, okay, there's nothing there. But, like, he openly went out uh, and bragged about what he was about to do. Also, my cat's running around here uh, crazily right now. Uh, let's see. Uh, what else on Moon? Is there anything I'm not hitting here uh, as we head around to, to kind of finish this up? Um, um, I, don't know. I mean, there's endless stuff about Moon, isn't there? I suppose yes. the most recent... Thing that I thought was worth mentioning is just the time Kiwi Farms took a vote to target children and started <laughs> collecting pictures of, I think it was Marion Arnold's five year old son um, that they had at one stage. And um, just because it's worth mentioning that happened, I mean, you know, Google search, read his ED page, I think all but one, and usually for, for ED, pretty much everything on that page is true. I mean, written in their style, but they've linked to everything, and all those quotes are true. Obviously, head up my blog, matthewhopkinsnews.com. There's got a Josh O'Connor Moon and James Gabriel Potter category. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff about him out there, and it's going to keep coming out. And, and you know, the ED article on him is good and, and worth worth checking out. Um, there's pictures of that girl he stalked, you know, um, stalking and threatened to dismember. Um, so there you go. I will by the leave way, we'll, that with you. By the way, we'll have to Thank have you, you back so on. Thank you for having me, Ralph. Yeah, I was going to say, thanks for coming on. We'll have to have you back. I saw a lot of people uh, positive about your appearance. So uh, thank you for coming on, man. I appreciate it. We'll see if the crook gets his site back up. I know he's trying to do that. Uh, I've been... I don't know. We'll see what happens. I know. So, yeah, I, that's what I'm saying. I don't know if it'll be for long uh, if he does. But uh, thank you, brother. I appreciate you coming on the show today. Speak soon. All right, speak soon. Uh, all right, there we go. Even got him to look at the uh, the cog case. Good day, sir. Highly encouraging. I thought it was a good guest. I thought Vordrek was a good guest. I actually, um, like I said, he'd sent me an email. He's like, we ought to do a show. I was like, yeah, you're right. We should. Let's do that. Let's do a jolly good show. And then I was like, yeah, we'll keep about an hour. And that's about how long it's on, about an hour. It'll be easier to clip out. If people want to go back through and watch, we'll have that clipped out. Rockfin, a couple people supporting over there already. Rockfin, what is the link? Fuck. It's underneath the stream. Where is it? Rockfin.com slash creator slash the Ralph Retort. You can just sign up anywhere on Rockfin. If you watch my stuff, I'll get